Hi everyone, I am Jonathan J. Reinhardt and I'm here with you another unboxing video. That's right. So we've done a whole series of unboxing videos about Dwarven Forge and it started off with one video where we had this big box and we just opened it all up and we said, hey, look at this, but we're not going to show you at all. We were teases, weren't we? We said, we're going to do videos on each individual set. So that's what we've had. And this is the final one in the set. And oh my goodness, this is a big one. It's for the Imperial Streets set that you can get. It costs $395, extra painted. It was from their very successful City Builder Kickstarter. They raised a few million on that. I want to remind you, before we go any further, that we also do a podcast, a Wargaming podcast. You can get that by going to wargamingrecon.com. Link in description below as appropriate. And we're going to actually have Stefan Pohorny, who is the Founder, owner, and head hunter, creative genius behind Dwarven Forge. He'll be a guest in early 2018 on the show. And he's also the reason why we got all this stuff that we can share with you because he sent it to us for review. So I want to thank him very much for that, Stefan. You are amazing, buddy. And I just I can't wait to dig into this. So we're going to do a little unboxing. But if you're like me, you want to have seen the other videos. You don't need to, but you want to have seen other videos in a series. So make sure to go back and see those if you haven't. If you have, great, or you can go back at a later point. So we're going to actually unbox, and if you're a little guy, make sure you get a grown-up to help you. You need your right tools, this is sharp, or if you're a grown-up like me, who is challenged with sharp objects. I'm a klutz, people, it's okay. Be extra careful when you're cutting, okay? And if this is, oh, you're going to be like, oh, because this is heavy as heck. Um, and this is like, Anything like the other packages, it's going to be a lot of bags, a lot of things to open. So let's just kind of cut in. I'm so excited for this. So Stefan is a wonderful guy for many reasons. And he agreed to send just a bunch of stuff for us to re review on the show. Most of the things that you're going to get from Dwarven Forge, and most reasons why people like them, are because it's great for like role playing games, D and D, and that kind of stuff. He does a whole sort of dungeon stuff, caverns, and all that. But he really branched out with a city, and he did a castle Kickstarter, and he branched out so that you can do more miniatures gaming, so you can do it with more gamers. So we're gonna open up the box. Oh, and there's boxes within boxes. I feel like exhibit. He has his. Thank you. And then you guys got to see this because this is boxes within boxes. <laughs> So we're going to, this is going to be a little doing, because I want to show you everything. Oh, and it's multi-leveled. You you cannot even fathom. <laughs> I guess for like 400 bucks. <laughs> you, sweet Jesus. <laughs> you, you want there to be a lot of stuff in it. Oh, my goodness. Stefan, you're killing me here. There's so much. It's wonderful. So we're just... <laughs> For people who don't like to see boxes getting open, this is going to be boring for you, and I apologize. It'll be worth it, but oh my goodness. Let's get this box out of here, people. Bam! And, okay, so we're going to dig in. Um, as I said, everything was from the Kickstarter. You could have got it if you backed on the Kickstarter, and if you didn't, don't worry. You can still get it on their website, dwarvenforge.com. It's not too late. You get a link to that in the description below, and you might want to check them out because I gotta say, if you've seen the other videos, you know I've been impressed. Have had a couple complaints, but I'm not expecting that to be an issue here. So this looks like a corner street set, and these are gorgeous. So unlike the other sets, I'm not taking everything out. I'm only gonna take one out because there's a lot of things I don't want to show them to you. It's beautifully painted. Look at that. You can get it unpainted. You can paint it yourself if you want to save yourself some money. But this is to make a street. And it works with your buildings. You can actually create a nice little plaza. Yeah, look. Maybe I will take a few. I'm like, I'm not going to take them all out because there's a lot. Do you understand there's a lot? And two seconds later, I'm like, here we go. I'm just going to take out all the things. So you can actually make like a little plaza area here. As I angle down and show you guys. So look, this is just something you can do with what I just had right there. People can gather, can put some buildings around it. Okay. It's durable. 
It's not cracking. It's a high plastic. I can drop it. It's okay. Toddler proof. That's my word for Dwarven Forge. Let's open up something that might go with it. So these are intended to be curbs, actually. I know I use it the other way, but to be curbs, and your buildings would be on it, and people would walk. You'd have um, transports, horses, you'd have tanks, whatever. Troops moving there. Now, I think this set would be really cool because unlike some of the other ones that we've shown, which were houses and things like that, and really tied to their time period, overall, a tutor, you're not going to see tutor in a, like a lot of World War II or anything like that. Whereas the, the stone cottage, you could. But these you really could use just for about any time period. Almost anywhere. Obviously, Western European, most likely Northern European. But it just it's cobblestone. And then you match up as I try to do it on the video. So you see? And you can create a lot of different roadways and shapes with it. So I'm just creating a little layout right here that you can see. And this is just a basic look street layout. Maybe I got a building going here, another one here. You want some symmetry. And they match up pretty well. So that's one thing. Let's get really close here for you. So there's been some complaints from people. I'm sorry about that extra light. That is just natural sunlight going on. So some people complain. You can actually see it right there. That it doesn't match up perfectly. So you can kind of comes up and that is something I don't like it's not completely even and for the money you would think it would match perfectly so you get these little lips but really when they're just casting one piece and using it over and over and over and over again it's almost impossible and plus for anyone who's ever walked on cobblestone streets you know this is pretty standard like I live in Boston and in Boston we have all these beautiful cobblestone streets these historic streets that were cow paths once upon a time you walk on them. It's like this, people. So I understand the complaints. I understand that people are like, oh, we don't know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not trying to diminish that. No, I'm not trying to diminish it. But, like, it's okay. So that's another option. We'll just show you some of the other ones you get. We keep all the things together. As we move on to the next one, so this one is just some plain cobblestone, and you get double sided um, on the sidewalks. As we open it, and you might think, like, why, why is it so hard to open? I'm just really, they packed it really well, but I'm just trying to be extra careful to not damage them with a the knife. Because although they're plastic, something tells me that a knife is going to just cut right through. So this is interesting because the sizing isn't what, what I expected. So you get your nice double-sided, right, which you can then pair as needed with that or with, you know, one of these. So this isn't, it's like half the width of the sidewalk because you got, it's basically a small road. But it comes with a bunch of these so that you can then add these on. Let's I hold it up for you. And that bas basically equals, and then some, the size that you would get. So you can use this as an extender. If I want the bricks going the same way, so you can create a whole plaza. And you just kind of get a nice little area. I'll do another one. So you can kind of just see. As I zoom you guys back in. So see, so it's neat. We'll move on. I am very excited though because I think these are just really nice sets. I'm running out of room here though <laughs> to, to move the boxes to the side. I get a whole six by four table, and I'm running out of room because I get so much Dwarven Forge stuff on the table. I feel like it's Christmas. Just opening all this, seeing everything. And as I said at the start of the video, Stefan sent this to us for review. So 
you know, we didn't have to spend all this money on it, but I would spend it in a heartbeat because it's worth every freaking penny. Now this is cool, it's similar to this one, right? Except you get more a wider road, you get an outside, you get a nice little inside. So you could, if my building was up to snuff, you could do some interesting things with this. Some weird path stuff going on. You can blend this to almost anything, but this is a nice outside curve, whereas this is a nice inside. So you can just kind of match them with the street in between. I guess it would be like this. <laughs> and you do your thing. And this comes with this is gorgeous. Look at this. So even if you bought this unpainted and you want to paint it yourself, it just is nicely sculpted and look. So it's all raised. So you can do some really good dry brushing on it. Feels good. It's hefty. And then you can match. So you would probably want to match it like such. Right? I really like that it, these go together so well, and they allow you a lot of creativity options for how you want to build. Uh, I love Lego, and Lego is all about building and creativity, so you can do different things. And I feel like this lets you do a lot of different things too. Stefan clearly, very clearly, has a winning business model here because people keep on backing it on Kickstarter. And, you know, at first, when I met Stefan, I was like, oh, you know, it's neat what you do. But I was like, that's for D&D. Not like D&D, but, you know, not really my thing. I get it now. So this one, you get some styrofoam in here because there's offset and sizing. And let's just take some stuff out. These are interesting. So you get... Oh, nice. So you get right here, look. You get your walkway, cobblestone, and sewer. And that's one other thing people kind of complained about. They thought the sewers were a little too big. And I mean, in real life, a sewer thing's not going to be that large, right? But the idea is for his world in Valoria, the rat people are going to come up. Or let's say you play Warhammer Fantasy, Skaven people, or you play King's War, the rat kin, I think is what they call them, Manta calls them, they come up. Or you're doing World War II, and let's say you're doing Paris, right? The underground's coming up, the Parisian free fighters are going to come up, any sort of insurgents or whatever, they're going to kind of come through and do their thing. You can get a lot of play out of that. And because of the scale of figures, his stuff here at Dwarven Forge is intended for, I think, 20 millimeter, 120, or oh, 25 millimeter, sorry, one um, 70 second scale which is close enough to 28, really. Um, but because of the scale, you can't have this too small because then it just doesn't look right. Also has, this is a nice piece here. Get a sewer grate, if you can see through. And bam, sewer grate comes off. So that like your troops are going and they're going to come down and they go right over, open it, they go in. So you get some extra play here. Nicely painted and fits nice in there. It doesn't just fall out. It's a good set. Good set. I'm impressed, Stefan. You impressed me. Not that you need to, but you have. We only get three more boxes, people. I promise we're making heaven way. And not in this video, but in another video, I will do a build. So you'll be able to see all the stuff that I have um, from Stefan put together and just how it is. So here's more sewer. And this is a deeper sewer, I think. Or maybe I'm just hallucinating and they're the same size. I guess they are the same size. I thought this one was bigger. But so you get more sewer, which is nice. But you're also supposed to get a uh hub. -huh. So this is cool. So these are stepping stones. Medieval times, Victorian times, and so forth. You'd have this, and you can see there's even like the wheel rut, and which is really cool. So people could step across because it'd be all that kind of muck and everything. People would just empty the little latrines out into the street. You can see this is maybe not as nice an area of town. You get some mud in here. The cobblestones have kept as much up as much. Got some moss and lichen growing. Adds a lot of character, and actually, you get that on here too. So makes it pretty neat. Next set over here, set, I say set, but next box, because this is all one set, the Imperial set right here, Imperial Street set. 
And I've lost track of how many pieces are in here. There's a lot. Because I know you're thinking like 400 bucks basically for this painted set. That's a lot of money. And it is. I agree with you. Wargaming is not cheap. None of this is cheap. And this is clearly a product for someone who has disposable income. Not all of us do. Uh, but worth it. So this is kind of like the opposite of this set here. And it's kind of similar to this. But you can mix and match as appropriate. You see these are sunken, whereas these are raised. So it's like the inverse. So you get the street down here and the cobblestones. So it would almost be like this. Or you can create a nice little windy effect. Uh, and actually, one thing, speaking of chip, it might just not be painted. But on this one right here, see right there? It's a white area that they just didn't get around to painting. Or maybe that's just aggressive dry brushing is what it might be. But when you look at it this way, it's a little jarring because you're like, oh, what is that white area? And then you look at it, boom, bam, here, it's just dry brushing. And then you got this, which is a cool piece. They're all cool pieces. But look, you can have a nice little walkway. And then you get your main street here. You can build nice curbs that you then have your buildings on. And then the last one, this is really cool because this has some accessories. So we just open this box quickly for you guys and ladies. I know I say guys often, but it's not just women who use Dwarven Forge or War Game. And I don't mean to give that impression, so I do want to apologize for that. It's just a colloquial term. Anyone, regardless of gender, can War Game and should War Game. So this, <laughs> there's a lot of these. Okay, Stefan, you're doing me in again, buddy. So you get these are pavers. You can use them as walls. They're meant to go flat, so you can extend things like so. Maybe you don't want a curb. You just got... And there's some bigger pieces. I'm trying to dig down into the box to get. So he also includes these nice, just big stone, cobblestone street areas without curb. And then, come on, I know you're in here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There's... Okay, here we go. So this is like for a city center. You get your nice plinth. You can put anything on it. You can have it just like this. You can put a statue on it. You could do just about whatever you like. Or you can use the Lion of Valoria. And this is a nice model. You can tell they did a good job because they wanted it to be bronzed. And anything that's out for a while is going to have that patina. The bottom is soft. They get nice foam. Not foam felt. So it'll not slide around too much get this in the middle of your city of course you could replace it with anything else that you like but here you go very nice imperial feel be great for prog right you could do any sort of historical war gaming with it it looks good and as i said i'm gonna have a whole thing where i'll use all the stuff here that i have and put it together so you can see what it looks like but that's imperial streets and i tell you what a set. What a set. The other set was impressive, but this is like, oh my God, you should see. I wish you could see all the boxes I have here. Well, thank you very much for sticking with me and watching this video. I know it was a little long because of all the stuff opening in the bags and the boxes and oh my goodness. A lot of stuff, a lot of value. Just a lot of value in here. So, Stefan, Jordan Forge, you guys hit it out of the park. It's just, it's great. And if you're interested in any of this, you want to buy any of it, there'll be a link in the description below, dwarvenforge.com. He has Kickstarters all the time, new sets coming. Everything works together. So if you have an older set and you back a new set, you buy new stuff, it just goes together. So this is his city builder stuff. It works with his uh, dungeon stuff. Of course, the dungeons are, you know, underground. The caverns go with it, so you can kind of make a whole world it goes. The city works with his castle stuff that he did not long ago. Get towers and everything. Just it's really cool. I think you should check it out. And I also think you should like and subscribe to this video. So you can do that below. And if you subscribe on YouTube, be sure to check that little thing to get notifications from us. So that way you find out when we have new videos out. 
and get all of our content that way. And we appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and watching our whole Dwarven Forge series that we have. It's been a joy and a blast to get this out for all of you. I want to remind you that we have our audio podcast, WargamingRecon.com has it. You can get it wherever you get audio podcasts. Apple, Android, doesn't matter. Stitcher, you name it, it's there. And as I said at the start of the video, Stefan Procorni, the founder and head creative honcho of Dwarf and Forge, will be on the podcast early 2018. That's right, everyone. So we'll find out more about Dwarf and Forge and what he has going on. And I can tell you, in February 2018, I will see him at TotalCon, which is a great gaming convention in Mansfield. Not Mansfield anymore. <laughs> Marlboro, Massachusetts. So it takes places all sorts of historical and role-playing games and board games and miniature war gaming. I'll see him there. There's a great uh, industry professional. I feel weird referring to myself as that. Industry professional um, event that I'll get to see him at and maybe play some stuff and buy things from him and do all sorts of cool stuff. So he'll be there, and hopefully you will too. You can see us at it. And that's about it. So thank you once again for watching this video. And no matter how busy you are, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how much time you're going to be playing with your Dwarven Forge, because I know I am, you know you have to. You gotta. You need to. Keep on gaming.